Welcome everyone. Now that we have an idea of what charges are and the forces that are acting between charges, we're going to get into something known as electric circuits. Circuits are really just when we make charges, electrons, move in a way we want them to move. And we can use that motion to do things like turn on light bulbs, to power motors, things like that. Now, circuits take quite a bit of time, even this introduction, so that's why we have kind of three different videos. We have different pieces. This first piece is going to, right from the beginning, clear up some misconceptions about circuits, and then introduce this term voltage. All right, this is the very beginning of getting to understand circuits and how electrons move in a circuit. So first part, part A, the shortest part, just what is a circuit? If you wanted to have a definition, well, it's a path that charges electrons, they flow through. All right, we know that when we're talking about moving charges, it's always the electrons that are moving. Those protons are locked in place. All right, we've seen charges moving when you bring positive or negatively charged objects nearby. If we want those charges to move in a certain way, we create a path. We create an electric circuit. So here's a really simple example. We have a battery here. We have a light bulb and a switch. The electrons move through the wire because wire is a conductor. The electricity, the electrons can move easily through. And you have a battery, you have a switch, and we have a light bulb. So it's simply a path that electrons are moving. Now how electrons are moving in this circuit. This is our misconceptions, okay? Things that I don't want you to think are correct as we move forward. The first is that a lot of people think the battery, when you plug in the battery, that's the electron factory. That's the thing that is creating electrons and firing them through uh, our circuit. That is incorrect. Similar to that misconception, is the idea that these wires are like hollow tubes where the electrons are simply firing through one by one. Think of like a water park, right? And you go down that water slide one at a time, okay? Both of those ideas are wrong. Batteries do not create electrons, and these wires are not like these hollow tubes. Electrons already exist everywhere. Remember, there are billions upon billions of electrons in every single wire, in the batteries themselves, in light bulbs, in switches. They're already present. What a battery does, and we'll get into this more when we talk about the energy, the voltage, the battery simply makes the electrons that are already present start moving. Here is a couple diagrams to help simulate this. This is the first incorrect way to look at uh, a circuit. Wires are not hollow tubes where electrons are flying across one electron, and then another electron, and then another electron. That is completely incorrect. Wires are not empty. They are filled with matter. They're made up of copper, of some kind of metal. Here's a better diagram, and I have two different parts, A and B. In letter A, this is just a chunk of a wire, just a piece of a wire, and these little blue dots represent electrons. Okay, just to make the diagram easier, we haven't shown the protons or the neutrons. Electrons already exist. Again, there's billions and billions of electrons in every square uh, centimeter of every material you can imagine, including wires. And electrons, remember, they just kind of wander around. They can drift. All right, in part A, we see them kind of just randomly moving back and forth in no particular direction. When you have a circuit, when you have a battery, what that does is it has one location, one kind of end of that wire have a negative charge, one have a positive charge. And we know what electrons do when there are opposite and like charges. The battery's job is to get this randomly drifting set of electrons to kind of start marching, to kind of start moving in one particular direction. That's what a battery does. That's what the outlets from your walls do at your home. They don't supply the electrons. They just start making those electrons move in a particular way. Okay, so don't think the battery is creating electrons, and don't think uh, that these wires are simply hollow tubes. All right, the electrons are already there, and they just start moving due to the presence of something like a, a battery. Okay, next part, part C, the energy of a circuit. We know that there are forces between charges, okay? So this first bullet point here, let's imagine I take a little positive charge 
and I put it right here. Imagine I got some tiny tweezers and I plucked off a single proton and I put it right here in between something that's very positively charged and something that's very negatively charged. Now, remember, you can't really take little positive charges, but this is actually a classic diagram for introducing the idea of voltage. You might see this if you study electricity more in the future. Okay, but let's just pretend I take this little proton and I put it right here. What's that proton going to do? What's that positively charged object going to do? Well, it's certainly going to repel away from this very positively charged thing, and it's going to attract to this thing. It's going to move. We know there's this electric force acting between these plates and this charged object. Well, if there's a force acting on that object and that object moves, work must be done because work is when there's a force and some displacement. We also know that if work is done, there's some kind of change in energy. And if this particle started at rest, if I just plopped it in with my tweezer, then it accelerated downward, that little positive charge gained some energy. So all of a sudden, because we have these charged objects, we can have energy, energy being given to a charged object. Right? We call that gain in energy, that change in energy, voltage. And voltage is how much energy each charge is given. We'll get into this later. I have this diagram right here because a great way to think about voltage, the energy associated with circuits, is to think of our gravitational potential energy. And here's the example here. I have uh, some person standing on top of a cliff. They're holding maybe like a little white ball here, and they drop it based on their height, based on the fact that we know there's this force due to gravity, the weight of the ball, there's some gravitational potential energy. And the ball is, of course, going to fall downwards. Sorry, I can't draw very well. Okay, Relative to this spot right here at the bottom, this ball has some gravitational potential energy. It's the same thing here. Okay, This charged object, due to its placement because of this electric force, well, it can start moving, and therefore it has some type of energy. And again, we call how much energy each individual unit of charge has voltage. Okay, and I know you've seen that term voltage before when you think of uh, uh, batteries and wires, things like that. Now, here's a tricky thing that's actually very important for the AP Physics 1 test. Voltage is actually known by many different names. All right, You'll see different names, especially this first one on the AP exam. Voltage is also known as electric potential because it's a type of or it's related to an electric potential energy. Just like we have gravitational potential energy, we have an electric potential energy due to the placement of this charge. So voltage is also referred to as electric potential. Sometimes they drop that word electric and they just call it potential. Sometimes they say, oh, the potential difference because like gravitational potential, how it's kind of a change, we're looking at two different points. Voltage is really looking at two different points, and we'll see that some more later on. It's also sometimes referred to as EMF. That's electromotive force. That's the voltage from like a power supply, like from a battery. We'll look more at that a little later. So just know that voltage is sometimes known as different words. The AP test likes using this term, potential difference. Okay, this is just another word for voltage. It's worth pointing that out. So if we want to give a circuit energy, if we want to give electrons energy, we need a voltage source. And something like a battery will do that. A 9-volt battery, what that means by definition is it gives every coulomb of charge, remember that's a certain number of electrons, 9 joules of energy. Okay, Voltage, there is an equation for it. It's the amount of energy per charge. Voltage is energy per amount of charge or V, V for voltage, is equal to E over Q. Remember, Q was that unit for charge. We measure voltage in something known as volts. Again, you're probably pretty familiar with that, volts. So a 9-volt battery gives every coulomb of charge 9 joules worth of energy. Okay, so when we have a battery put into a circuit, like my diagram right here, we are giving those electrons, every coulomb of charge, a certain amount of energy. Okay. Now, remember, I'm actually going to jump up here. These electrons already had some energy. They're kind of wiggling around, drifting back and forth. The battery is giving an additional amount of energy. Just like we could have an object like this ball right here with 
other types of energy. Maybe it's already moving. You, by bringing it to a higher spot, gives it an additional amount of energy. That's what batteries are doing. They are giving an additional amount of energy, an additional amount of energy per charge or voltage. Now, when we have a battery set up like this, let's imagine an electron right here. What's this electron going to do? Well, it's going to repel away from this battery, and it's going to want to attract to this positive side. Batteries have a positive side and negative side. This electron right here is going to want to move upwards because, again, it's repelling from this negative side. It's attracted to this positive side. You can't really see it, but the wire in a light bulb kind of goes like this and then back down. So an electron right here wants to go this way. An electron right here wants to go this way. An electron right here wants to go this way. What a battery does inside, we're not really going to get into the details. There's a chemical process which deposits uh, electrons, which makes them keep moving. There's a chemical reaction doing work that puts electrons right back here in the starting point. Not creating electrons, just moving them from one side to the other. So here I have my circuit. I have moving electrons, and they are moving. They are drifting in this circular motion, this counterclockwise path, because the battery has given them energy. They are attracting to the positive side, repelling from this negative side, and each coulomb of charge, in this case, is given 9 joules. Now, we have a conservation of energy thing going on, and I'm going to go back to my gravitational potential energy diagram. If I take this ball up to some cliff and I drop it, it has some gravitational potential energy relative to the bottom of the cliff. When the ball falls that distance, it has used up all that gravitational potential. Same thing with a battery. If an electron starts right here, I'm going to switch colors. If an electron starts right here, start, and it ends right here, comparing these two points, the battery has given that electron 9 volts of energy, or it's given each unit of charge 9 joules of energy. Just like when you take a ball from here to here, it's given a certain amount of gravitational potential energy. Well, what happens to the ball when it gets to the bottom? It's used up all of that gravitational potential energy. When the charges get from one end to the other, they have used up that amount of energy given by the battery. Now, back in this example, where is that energy gone? Well, it goes into like kinetic energy. Maybe there's a little bit of sound energy, or if there's friction from air resistance, maybe some energy gets sucked up into that. But all that energy is lost. It's no longer gravitational potential. It's converted into other types. The same thing is true with a circuit. These charges are given energy from the battery. By the time they get from one location to the other, they use up all that energy. In this circuit, usually the uh, energy isn't lost in wires it's going to go into the light bulb. That's why when you plug in a light bulb, it starts shining. It starts shining nice and bright. It turns on, so to speak. That energy given from the battery is used up going through this pathway. If those electrons, if those charges didn't use up that energy, then I'd have kind of a violation. Imagine I have like an electron right here, and it's like, oh boy, I've just been given 9 uh, joules of energy. Or uh, let's say I have a unit of charge, and it was given 9 joules. It's like, oh, da, 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 da. I'll go around, and I'm not going to use up any of that energy. Ooh, now I get an additional 9 volts. I'm going to go around. I'm not going to use any of it up. Ooh, now I have an additional 9 volts. That's 3 times 9 volts. That's 27 volts. If those charges just kept going around and around and around, never giving up that energy, then we'd have like free energy. That's not possible. It would be like if this ball fell and it didn't use up that gravitational potential. That doesn't really make sense. Gravitational potential energy is based on height, and it clearly went some distance, some height. Electric potential voltage is based on a difference in two locations. It must use up that energy. Sometimes students ask, like, oh, how do the electrons know to use up 9 volts? It's a great question, but it's kind of a weird one to answer. It would be like saying, well, when you drop a ball, how does it know to use up all the gravitational potential? Well, it's going to because it's going to fall some height unless there's some force in the way unless something is over here blocking it it's going to travel from here to here those charges are going to move around they're going to have all that voltage they're going to complete that path so they're going to use up all of that energy for a circuit usually the wires never take up energy so if the battery is supplying nine volts they are giving charges nine joules of energy it's the light bulb which is removing, it's using up 
9 volts in this very simple circuit we have here. Okay. Now, to be honest, as I end the video, AP Physics 1 is not going to require that you know some of those fine details about voltage. All right, there's really just some broad things that you really need to know to understand circuits. So the most basic stuff to make sure you know everything on the test, we know that batteries give energy, they supply voltage. And then things like light bulbs or motors, something like that, they will remove energy. It will cause a loss in voltage. And energy should be conserved. If a battery supplies 9 volts and there's only a single light bulb attached, that light bulb needs to use up 9 volts. All right. If there are three things in the circuit, those three things need to use up that energy. But this is really the key stuff here. All right. Sometimes voltage uh, can get a little tricky in understanding it because it is on the micro scale and it's tougher to uh, to imagine uh, as intuitively as other uh, other things. All right. That's enough for that video. Thanks for watching.